It's the beginning of a new year, and with it comes other new things. New goals, for instance. Maybe some new video games. Perhaps even a new train. Like this one. We start with this, an old EFE Gilbone 1959 stock. If you wanted the London Underground on your model railway layouts, EFE's range of model trains were a pretty popular option. There was, however, one small issue. You couldn't actually run them. Yes, the wheels could move, and yes, it could fit on double gauge track, but if you wanted it to move on its own, or, dare I say it, go around corners even, you'd need to motorise them, usually with one of these, a motor boogie. It certainly wasn't a job for a new modeler, requiring lots of cutting and patience, and the motor boogies themselves weren't exactly reliable. Unfortunately though, that was the closest you could get to a ready-to-run tube train. But that was in the past. Two years ago, EFE, now owned by Backman, came out with an official ready-to-run 1938 tube stock. It featured a much better, more efficient way of powering the train, an all-wheel drive setup powered by a cordless motor. Essentially, this made the train smoother and quieter, and as a result, it was a hit, with a second release delivered just a few months after it. And now we come to the present day, where we have this, the new EFE Rail 1959 stock. Before we get to the train itself, I do want to take a quick look at the packaging. The box is decorated with photos, symbols and even seating maquettes. There's also a brief history of the stock's life on the back. I really like how Backman have gone about this. They haven't gone the corporate way and just have a plain, simple box. In a way, it does actually make you quite excited about the model before you even go on the track. Oh, and there's no need to worry about your train being damaged in transit. They're packaged securely in plastic ice blocks. It is, however, a bit of a faff trying to put the models back into the box. So here we have it. And straight away, the first thing that caught my eye was the paint job. It depicts the unpainted aluminium finish seen on the real thing, and whilst it does look rather classy and special, it's a bit... inaccurate. If you look at this image from the early 70s, you can see the body is almost white from oxidation. Even when they were new, they looked more silver than dark grey. The somewhat inaccurate colours were present on the old Gilbo model from two decades ago, and hence, does raise an issue. Although there is interior lighting, the headlights themselves do not actually function. The tooling itself has not had any updates since 2004 apart from a plastic chassis and a raised interior. The couplers at the ends of the trains are missing, which was done to allow multiple ends to connect, but leaves a gaping hole with not even a spare dummy coupling to fit if you didn't want to do that. When you consider these points, it's quite difficult to see why the set is worth £400. If you look at Hornby for example, they have also revived an old, sought-after EMU for release this year. However, they revamped the tooling, added directional lighting and even a die-cast chassis, all for £35 cheaper than the 1959 stock. So what makes it worth the price? Well, you get... <clears throat> a 22-pin Plux DCC decoder fitted! But every model comes with a decoder nowadays, and besides, if you're a DC modeler, decoders don't exactly matter to you. What will matter to some people, however, is the detail. Even if the average person won't be able to see it, EFE have still gone the extra mile of detailing the inside, and very well at that. The floor has a nice texture, the seats are picked out in blue, there are separately fitted grab handles, they've even added route maps and advertisers to the ceiling, something which normally would have been next to impossible to implement properly, but thanks to advanced technology is there and recognisable. The only problem the interior has is that the driving cars do have the decoder placed in the middle of them, which does spoil the immersion a bit. The floor, as previously mentioned, is also higher than normal. However, this is just down to the motor taking up a lot of space, and quite frankly, no one would notice it anyways when it's on the track. Speaking of... Here it is on the test track of the Model Railway Club near King's Cross. Before we see this thing running, there are a few things I should point out. When you pick up the carriages, they feel extraordinarily light, as if you could drop them and they'd float gracefully towards the ground. This is because of the plastic chassis, which was originally die-cast. 
You see, metals conduct electricity, and a metal chassis could cause accidental short circuits and the like if it comes in contact with the pickups or wheels. With bigger models like the Hombi 4 VEP, this isn't a problem, but with the 1959 sort, there is the massive issue of space. So it's understandable why there was a move to plastic. The other thing I should point out is the process of setting up the train, namely the coupling process. The unit uses special couplings to link the carriages together, which in theory is okay for a multiple unit model like this. In reality, however, it's a different story. You have to link each carriage together with three separate couplers, one of which isn't conductive and must be in the middle of the train, as well as all of them having to face upwards. Once you've found which way is up, it's time to connect them together. Now on the previous 1938 sock releases, a common problem was that the couplers fit too tightly into the socket, meaning taking them in and out required large amounts of force. It didn't help that the sockets were suspended from a small bit of plastic, resulting in them actually breaking off in some cases. With that being said, the 1959 sock is… exactly the same. I'm not sure why EFE decided not to try to at least improve the tolerances of the couplers, but this is really quite disappointing. With these minor, and perhaps major, setbacks out of the way, let's see this thing go. So, after some time on the track, I can confirm a few things. Firstly, there is indeed interior lighting. It's also a very smooth runner, but that's to be expected from the coreless motor. There is, however, one thing I'm not so sure about. You might be thinking, well, when's it going to go faster? But this is in fact full speed. These apparently run at a scale speed of 25 miles an hour, which at first seems absolutely bewildering. Why would anyone want a metro train running that slowly? But this slow speed is intentional. You see, tube trains have a top speed of 45 to 50 miles an hour, but typically run at speeds of 30 miles an hour in the tunnels due to tight curves and old infrastructure. The small size of them and the lack of scenery increases the sense of speed, so we think they go quicker. But, and this is a big but, above ground they're able to achieve much higher speeds. These 1959 stock units, for instance, regularly reached 40 miles an hour between Acton Town and Hammersmith in service. Passengers might have been travelling in a trampoline park, but that's beside the point. While it's good to see EFE try to be prototypical with the speed, it would have been better if they just... didn't. After returning back home, I thought, would I recommend this set to anyone? And the answer is... yes. Despite issues like the tooling being old enough to drink and the missing end couplers, I still recommend you go out and buy this. Why? Well, at the time of recording, Backman has been the only mainstream manufacturer to make ready-to-run London Underground models. Of course, other manufacturers like Hellion and even Hornby have made London transport models, but they're all about the days of old and not the days of now. These modern multiple-unit tube stock show that Backman is willing to cater for this forgotten corner of the market. They might release new, present-day units. They've done this before with the S-Stock back in 2016. But though it may seem, the audience they're aiming for, London Underground enthusiasts, is a lot smaller than, say, British Railway enthusiasts. So there is a chance that you could stop releasing all of this stuff if they're not selling well. But if the audience increases, then there's more reason for Bagman to continue selling what they're buying. More releases, more variety. More variety, more buyers. More buyers, more reason for new releases. So basically, buy the new 1959 stock if you want to improve the chances of more new underground models. Or if you just want a tube train. Thanks for watching.